Yes, war is dark enough in itself, but as you'll know from some of our other shows, many despicable things happen in a war behind what we might call closed doors. We only need to look at the Nazi doctor, Josef Mengele, who conducted experiments on people that make your Mengele. stomach churn. We might also look at the Nazi death marches, the massacres, the genocides, the torture of prisoners, and prisoners literally being worked to death. These things all happened during the Second World War, as did biological warfare and the testing of deadly agents on those captured by certain militaries. But today we'll focus on just one matter of total depravity during that war, in this episode of The Infographic Show, the horror of Unit 731. Unit 731 was the brainchild of the Imperial Japanese Army during World War II. It was a biological and chemical warfare research unit that conducted experiments on prisoners with the aim of developing deadly weapons. It's written that at its base in China, remember the Japanese were at war with China, around 3,000 men, women, and children were tested on. Most of these, we are told, were Chinese, but some of them were from the Allied nations, the Soviet Union, Korea, and Mongolia. The unit lasted until the end of the war in 1945, and it's written it had ample funding from the Japanese government. Okay, so this unit was developing dastardly weapons, and it needed to test those weapons on people first. But other tests were also done, related to trying to understand what the human body could endure. That way the Japanese military might better understand what its own soldiers could go through. The cold. One of the many things soldiers had to put up with during the war was cold, and cold did kill a lot of people. At Unit 731, they wanted to understand just how cold someone could get and still survive. The website unit731.org tells us, some human test subjects were taken outside during the harsh winter until their limbs froze off for the doctors to experiment how best to treat frostbite. The New York Times, which had testimonies from people who had seen the horrors of this unit, wrote that these people would be taken outside and guards would throw water on them until they saw the victim had frostbite. Sometimes, wrote the newspaper, the guards would hit the arm of the prisoner with a stick and if he heard something like a wood against wood sound, he knew the arm was totally frozen. What happened next is the doctors would use various methods to try and unfreeze the arm or other body part. Sometimes the prisoner would be left alone to unfreeze, sometimes warm water would be thrown on him or her, and sometimes much warmer water. Ah, uh, warm water when you're already frozen? The Japanese doctors, according to the Times, concluded that the water over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but never more than 122 degrees Fahrenheit, worked the best. Vivisection. The Japanese military also wanted to know how best to treat diseases and injuries, but we are told that to do this they would often use live prisoners to operate on. It's said that some of these prisoners would be deliberately given a disease, and then the doctors would open up the body of the patient without any kind of anesthesia. They wanted to look at the effects of the disease before the body began decomposing, and that's why they kept the subjects alive. These people were called marutas or logs. The New York Times, with testimony from a former surgeon, said they just wanted to know what had happened inside. That man told the Times, I cut him open from chest to the stomach, and he screamed terribly, and his face was all twisted in agony. He no made this shit. unimaginable sound, he was screaming so horribly, but then he finally stopped. This was all in a day's work for the surgeons, but it really left an impression on me because it was my first time testing pathogens. One of the major your first time doing surgery your experiments at unit 731 was to test how certain pathogens including cholera or anthrax would affect a number of people if they were exposed to the pathogens they didn't just do this inside the camp but also did what they called field testing this was done by dropping the pathogens on small communities in China. They wanted to see if they could cause an outbreak of disease. We are told some of these experiments were successful, so the Japanese then had the idea to carry these pathogens to the United States in what were called balloon bombs. It's written that the Japanese did send about 200 balloons to the US, but these failed for the most part, only leading to the death of 7 people. They also had a plan to drop plague-infected fleas on San Diego by using kamikaze pilots testing weapons. The Japanese also wanted to test weapons that they could use on the battlefield, and this included regular weapons but also toxic gases. To do this, prisoners would be taken out to a field and tied to a spot with a stake. The soldiers would then start testing, which sometimes just meant shooting guns at the target, and other times throwing grenades at certain distances to see how effective they were. 
The bodies of the victims would then be analyzed, so the Japanese knew exactly what damage their weapons could do. We're told that in one experiment, gas was fired at the tied up prisoners, but the wind changed direction and it sent the Japanese soldiers running. It's also said that the soldiers would occasionally uh -huh. test out their flamethrowers on the prisoners. The pressure chamber and spinning. While Japanese people who had worked in the camp later recalled how many parts of prisoners could be seen in jars all over the camp, it's not always known how these people died. Perhaps one of the worst deaths was the pressure chamber. We are told that prisoners would be placed inside a pressure chamber, sometimes alongside another prisoner, and the pressure would be turned up until basically the prisoners' eyes popped and they eventually died. If that wasn't horrific enough, other prisoners would literally be spun to death so that the military could test centrifugal forces. Operations The Japanese also wanted to have better surgeons, and those surgeons needed subjects to work on. One report we found tells us how one subject was given an appendectomy. After that, his arm was removed, and after that, he received a tracheotomy. This all took about 90 minutes, and when the doctors were done, they just killed that patient. The man who did these surgeries was, at the time, a student doctor. He told the media that he had no idea what to expect when he was told he was going to China to practice surgeries. Spreading Syphilis This is China. the testimony from a worker at Unit 731. Infection of venereal disease by injection was abandoned, and the researchers started forcing the prisoners into sexual acts with each other. It's said that if the pair refused, they would be shot. At other times, children were infected with the disease. The reason this happened was so those infected prisoners could be vivisected at various stages of the disease, and the doctors at the camp could better understand how it affected a person's organs during that stage of the infection. Forced Pregnancy It said that female prisoners would be made guys, by force. Listen to my zany voice as I talk about World War II. Whoa. Remember to subscribe. Whoa. H. Alright. Yeah, a lot of countries did a lot of horrible things. There's probably still a lot of horrible things going on under behind closed door, right? That are like equally fucked up. Uh, that you'll read about in like 50 years or something, right? That's uh, it's fucked. The world is fucked, indeed. Very fucked. Uh, Force and Smug Donut says, I think my donut got cucked yesterday by the out. Tedge minus six L O W. Uh, I actually checked videos of the outage. Oh, but I didn't see this one. Soul of the lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. Soul of the lost withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. Just build up. Every boss, just build up. Nothing compares to the Minecraft torture feels by man. I was waiting for that one. Hey, he's doing the real forcing build here. R1 chug. Viper. Wait, what the fuck? 
he recreated I saw that he recreated some stuff before, but he actually recreated whole Dark Souls 1. I mean When people are desperate enough for Elder Ring, I guess Might be an option For some smug tea time on at 6-9 It says today's the day, I believe of course you do, I've been fucking closer every single fucking day, like it's been right on there dude. Every time we have at least one more attempt that could have been it. Yesterday was like fucking two and a half. Could have been I can't it. believe those crazy stories from Japan. Boy that was some sick shit. We never did that sort of stuff in my administration. Omega Wolf. Anyways, when are you getting George W on here? I bet he has some crazy stories too. Yeah. I bet they do. <sighs> bet the presidents have some real fuck up shit.